Hello friends, you may recall last time we discussed impacts of air pollution on human health. So, in continuation now we would like to discuss today the impacts of air pollution on vegetation and animals. So, this is the contents list of this lecture like uh, we will go through about impacts of air pollution on plants. For example, what are the factors that influence uh, the, the process of influence of air pollution on the plant uh, growth process or their photosynthesis process those kind of things. And then pollution deposition on plants that also you know causes several kinds of problems. Injury versus damage you know sometimes injury happens to plant leaves, but it may also cause some damages which can result into some economic costs. Entrance of a pollutant in a plant, so what are the pathways the plant get exposed to air pollutants, so then negative implications happen. Effect of various pollutants you know means every pollutant has a different kind of effect as you have seen like SO2, ozone, particulate matter they have different uh, health impacts on human beings. Similarly, on plants also different pollutants have different kind of effects or impacts. Then we will see the impacts on animals of the air pollution. So, uh, like uh, animal life again you know they are also living beings. So, similar to human health effects animals also have certain health effects due to air pollution. So, but uh, you know vary this impact can vary from animal to animal from their you know at the evolutionary stages, pets, birds, fishes different kind of environment uh, is affected uh, differently by air pollutants. So, all those things we will see uh, you know what are the total harmful uh, impacts of the pollutants on uh, different kind of animals like pets or farm animals or wildlife or insects etcetera and they, thereafter we will conclude it. So, uh, as an introduction if you want to see the impact of air pollution the negative impact of the air pollution on plant growth. So, you can see uh, you know these uh, uh, these are shown this picture of the uh, plants or trees. So, the air pollutants can affect uh, basically the metabolic uh, function of the leaves okay? and they can interfere in the net carbon fixation by the plant canopy. So, plant canopy means these leaves etcetera are there, but in total process whether stem or the roots. So, different ways you know impact can be through different ways and then the air, air pollution causes some stress and when you know other stresses are there like water related stresses are there uh, for the plant or trees. So, these combined effect may be little bit severe. When we talk about different factors which influence the impact of air pollution on plant, then basically we talk about like you know exposure time and then the what is the concentration of the pollutant which like we have seen in human beings also a small concentration you can get exposed to for longer period even then there may be uh, you know little disturbance about the system, but the high concentrations the acute exposure can cause more damage right. Similarly, the temperature. Uh, so, like heat stress may be caused by temperature those kind of things. Then what is the condition of the soil that soil condition can be affected by air pollutants because of dry deposition, because of wet deposition right. Then the nutritional status of plants because you know metabolic system can be affected by air pollutants. So, what is the status of if it is you know healthy plant and good nutrients are being pumped into the system of the plant. So, it can maybe uh, it can be uh, kind of resilient or it can be sturdy, it can face or uh, get exposed to air pollutants, but damage may not be very severe. Then the age of the plant as we have seen you know there are vulnerable po population in uh, human, human beings also like children or old people or those having some allergy or some other uh, you know diseases like diabetes etcetera, they get exposed to air pollution and effect may be severe or more. So, similarly like if plant is more old or plant is very tender when it is just growing. So, at that time may be the effect can be severe or uh, more damaging. Then the rates of the growth of the plant that also affect the pollution effect. Exposure to sunlight as we have seen you know uh, because the in the presence of sunlight they make the food. So, again if it is uh, you know lot of particulate pollution is there and good amount of sunlight is not absorbed by plants. So, then again the growth can be affected. Then there are climate conditions like uh, you know temperature humidity they also contribute into 
you know uh, negative or positive effect of the plant growth. Well, when we talk about uh, injury versus damage, so basically uh, we see like uh, whatever observable uh, alterations are there in the plant growth or plant leaves, some color uh, you know changes etcetera, those kind of things are known as injuries. Okay. So, uh, in continuation to injury you know the damage is there, like uh, damage means uh, loss of uh, aesthetic value of the plant as well as some economic uh, loss can be there because of those kind of injuries which could be the degree or extent of the injury which can result into losses, economic or aesthetic losses then we call that it is damage kind of thing. Well, so degree of injury against the air pollution uh, can depend upon uh, you know the exposure, the uh, dose, the concentration etcetera. So, you can see here the degree of injury and on uh, this x this is concentration into time that is basically the dose. Uh, you may recall that last time also I said you know there is a saying that everything is uh, you know toxic or non toxic everything it depends on basically the dose. Okay. So, very low dose even you know poisonous things your system can uh, digest or it can not uh, you know react in that negative way which it will be when dose is very high. So, very small dose may not uh, affect the health very severely, but again it depends upon the toxicity of the pollutant also like if uh, like cyanide even very small uh, you know quantity of the cyanide if we are get exposed to it is dangerous to the life. So, the concentration into time the dose as dose increases the degree of injury also increases. So, that kind of things are there like uh, you know small doses, small exposure it may just uh, bear it or tolerate it. So, no significant effect may be there at the small level of the doses. When dose is increased then po this possible nutritional value means the food uh, taking uh, process may be affected then biochemical alterations can be there after certain level of the dose. Then physiological responses can be there when dose is very high and it can also result into some visible negative uh, symptoms. Okay. And after that even it can cause the death of the plant if you know where dose is very high and it is for longer duration then maybe plant do not recover and it dies. So, the exposure of the degree and injury follows the linear relationship as dose increases the this injury level also increases and uh, the exposure increases injury may occur and even it can convert it into damage. When we talk about in you know, a pathways of the pollutant entrance to the plants, so it can be direct or indirect. So, direct means through uh, like stomates, uh, stomates like very uh, small pores are there you can see these are basically the microscopic openings or pores in the uh, you know this uh, epidermis of leaves and young stems. So, through that you know pollutant can enter into the system of the plant or indirect can be there because the pollutants can deposited in onto the soil or it may be onto some water body where from water is being fetched and it you know the plant is watered by that particular uh, water body. So, it can come through soil or water also. So, that is the indirect way and it can go through the roots also. So, maybe it can come to the uh, leaves like particulate matter it can deposit it, even gases can get injected into the pores or it can come through the roots also. So, both direct and indirect. So, you know a pollutant undergoes uh, many reactions uh, during uh, the presence in the boundary layer. It can you know go through the roots, it can go through the stem it can go through the leaves etcetera, gaseous phase transformation there you know several kind of phase transformation may be there. Then when we talk about you know air pollutants affecting plants different kind of air pollutants because the air is composed of uh, you know nitrogen oxygen etcetera, but pollutants enter from different sources and the presence of pollutant can be in terms of like sulphur dioxide or it can be fluoride compounds like hydrogen fluoride. It can be in terms of ozone as you know ozone is secondary pollutant, it is uh, uh, you know produced in the uh, presence of sunlight because of certain precursors like NOx etcetera. Then chlorine may be there, hydrogen chloride can be there, then oxides of nitrogen can also be there nitric oxide or nitrous oxide or nitrogen dioxide those kind of oxide. 
ammonia can also be there hydrogen sulfide and then uh, you know hydrogen cyanide or mercury or heavy metals or herbicides can be there because when we are doing sprays on the uh, to kill the weeds so that that those small particles in in terms of aerosols they may be in the air there there can be like peroxyacetyl nitrate or pan in short we we call then smoke can also also be there so different air pollutants can be present in air and they can uh, you know cause individual effect on the plants as well as collective impact so both both impact may be there like when we see the effect of the ozone on the plants then basically it enters the tree through uh, you know this uh, uh, stomatal openings as we have just discussed on the leaf and it reacts with the leaf tissues to inhibit the photosynthesis process basically it can uh, you know uh, remove that greenery portion okay so uh, that uh, food process this photosynthesis process food producing process affected it can discolor it so uh, you know solar uh, absorption uh, solar light absorption may be completely disrupted then ozone also disrupts the carbohydrate transport to the leaves and which increases the sugar concentration uh, at certain places in the you know plant uh, at several places and it makes the you know this all these leaves etc susceptible to insect attack because you know sugary things uh, they attract the insects etc so those kind of disturbances may be there in the plant growth process when we see the symptoms like uh, what kind of symptoms may be there because of exposure to the ozone so you can see like uh, yellow spots on the needles can be there right here like you can see then it can also uh, yellow, yellowing of the complete leaf and the premature leaf drop can be there because um, it is uh, damaged and it can not survive for longer period then the uh, sulfur dioxide or nox oxides of nitrogen their effect can be seen in different way like because they produce as you know the acid rain in the presence of moisture so to get converted into uh, sulfuric acid and uh, nitric acid and when uh, you know it comes down with the precipitation with the rain or acid rain it can be depending upon how much concentration of sulfur dioxide is present in the air so that acid rain can affect the plant growth because of you know disturbances into nutrient uptake etc so when we see the effect you know it can leach because the rain uh, this acid rain can uh, you know leach the beneficial nutrients okay and then those nutrients are not available to the plant so the growth is affected and uh, the toxic uh, uh, you know this like aluminum etc they are taken by the trees because its concentration increases and other nutrients goes away so that can be kind of double effect negative effect on the plant growth and like so2 causes uh, you know this kind of uh, uh, necrosis effect on the uh, these leaves so this is again uh, because of uh, different pollutants but sulfur dioxide pollutant effect can be seen in that way it can also fold the leaves so unhealthy leaves are there because of sulfur dioxide exposure similarly like uh, this fluorine you can see the pan related peroxyacetyl nitrate it creates the glazy uh, bronzing kind of effect on and this uh, you know uh, like this potato leaves picture is there so this is not the healthy leaf and discolor uh, becomes the part of the growth similarly la fluorine damage can be like uh, again some uh, low level of uh, necrosis so that way this uh, damage is there to the leaves when we talk about you know different pollutants and their effects depending upon how much threshold limit is there so beyond the threshold limit concentration is there so that uh, you know it can affect very negatively we have seen the effect of sulfur dioxide uh, ozone uh, pan etc okay so similarly ethylene can also have negative impacts like uh, leaf abnormalities can be there flower droppings can be there because the presence of that if chlorine is there chlorine can bleach the leaf so again photosynthesis process will be affected similarly if we see the ammonia you know this cooked green appearance becoming brown or green on drying so these are the effect of ammonia hydrogen chloride can have uh, you know this uh, necrotic uh, this uh, kind of effect and mercury it it is uh, like uh, chlorosis and then it can also uh, result in brown spotting 
okay. Hydrogen sulphide can have similarly sulfuric acid as you know because of this acidic nature, it can affect the plants in a very negative way. Now, we talk about uh, animals, how animals are affected by the uh, air pollution. So, because uh, it is similar to the process like they also inhale air, so if polluted air is inhaled then their respiratory system as well as other organs can get affected. For example, you know uh, if you see like this dog is suffering from nasal infections and that can be because of you know polluted air. Accumulation of airborne contaminants, okay, contaminants, pollutants or in vegetation or forage that serves their feed. So, through that also they consume these pollutants and these subsequent effects ingested uh, you know those uh, on animals. So, they, they get affected negatively. And, but uh, you know not every exposure to air pollution is uh, by inhalation, it can go through uh, ingestion, through skin, through other pathways also. Well, uh, it can also make uh, uh, unhealthy living like their moods can be affected, they can be depressed, okay. Uh, their behavior can be altered. So, the chemicals and heavy metals, they have direct influence on the social and mating behavior of animals. So, if that is kind of pollution is there, their whole cycle can be affected. Then there can be several diseases and that can result into mortality or death and that can come through like uh, NOx or SO2. They are kind of silent killers for uh, you know these wildlife animals because uh, even a small concentration they get accumulated into their body and uh, their system get affected uh, very negatively. Biodiversity loss is there because if certain species getting affected by a particular pollutant in a severe way and if they are uh, you know uh, reducing in number, so the whole chain get affected in this ecosystem right. Then uh, their population and their food chain all those things get affected. When we talk about you know these uh, examples where animals got uh, exposed to air pollutants and uh, the negative impacts were observed. So, <coughs> like uh, these examples we have discussed in case of human health impact also, but uh, they were also responsible for negative impacts on animals like this Muse Valley uh, uh, incident in 1948. So, it caused illness and mortality among pets and farm animals. Okay. Dogs, cats and poultry were the most uh, you know susceptible species in that sense and the larger farm animals were generally unaffected because of their sturdy nature. Right. Then in London smog you know the cattle were reported to be severely affected because of that uh, you know London smog uh, that we know about. And this, uh, this Pozo Rica 1950 incident or episode uh, you can see these animals including uh, you know canaries or chickens, cattle, pigs, all geese or ducks, dogs all were affected uh, means across all these population. When we see the effects on the pets, you know household pets suffer uh, an increased risk of uh, tumors uh, when exposed to a polluted air over an extended period of time. So, those kind of things may happen. Then they can go coughing and nose and throat disease and infections etcetera in polluted environment. And then particulate matter in the air, this has been linked to uh, you know cardiac arrest like uh, heart attack as it happens in human beings also. And uh, many veteran doctors they say that uh, uh, these pet deaths are related to air pollution, high air pollution levels. When we talk about you know these uh, amphibians, uh, so they have uh, uh, again similar effects or changes in physiolo physiology as it does in, in case of human beings and ozone basically impairs this immune system uh, in human beings as well as in uh, these uh, like uh, toads etcetera. Well, when we talk about the birds, so birds are affected directly uh, by coal power plant uh, emissions okay, those if they are not controlled, if high uh, concentration of uh, sulphur dioxide is coming out or particulate matter is coming out. So, they can damage the birds respiratory systems, right. So, the whole system get uh, affected and their reproductivity also get affected, their uh, you know behavior get affected from uh, morning to evening those kind of things. The deposition of air pollutants in wetlands, this can increase the uh, you know acidity, okay. It can uh, reduce uh, the pH and it can cause the death of the fish and that can result into a reduction of population of those uh, 
uh, preys which uh, are dependent on their uh, these uh, eating the fish. Then discoloration of birds occur because of you know uh, black carbon in the air and other pollutants this can happen. When we talk about the fish, so acid rain you know falling in rivers and uh, streams they can cause uh, the pH levels to decrease and very low level of pH is not fit for aquatic life. So, they can kill the fish right and uh, if they are dep dependent on you know the uh, its general range of the pH. So, fluctuation of pH you know they cannot uh, really bear or tolerate tho those kind of things. Acidic rivers and streams that, that can cause respiratory distress in fish. So, th that, is, that is also a problem. Similarly, the acidic water is generally uh, you know clear or cleaner. Uh, so, you know the sunlight goes deep into that. Okay? So, it increases the temperature and there are you know certain fish population which are very sensitive to the temperature. If temperature increases beyond certain limits, so again it, they, they, they are not uh, happy there and they, they get into stress and maybe their behavior will change or they will migrate. Right? So, then we can see the insects behavior or impact on the insects as you know like uh, people say that the best uh, you know biological indicator to find whether the environment is clean or not, air is clean or not, see the small insects. If you find lot of you know this uh, biodiversity small insects and uh, all those kind of uh, you know things there. So, that means the environment is healthy, air is healthy. Okay? So, small fluctuations in air quality that can force certain insects to relocate, they, they do not, uh, they cannot tolerate you know the changes in that particular uh, air pollution level and they can affect the plants also because the life of plants and insects are very much uh, integrated uh, kind of symbiotic life you can say. So, then the plants affected, then animals also uh, affected because they are dependent on the plant diet. So, insects which are affected by air pollution, uh, they digest organic waste less effectively and then that can result into you know build up of organic waste when air pollution rises in the area. So, means uh, butterfly or small insects if you do not find somewhere you should be worried, it is a worrisome condition because that may be an indicator that uh, air pollution or other pollution may be high in that particular region. When we talk about like major pollutants which affect the health of animals, so basically like uh, three major air pollutants are responsible for livestock damage because they are you know quite uh, big in size and their interaction with air pollutant is different than the like fish or insects or those small animals. So, the fluoride, arsenic and lead, these are the three very toxic uh, you know pollutants which can affect uh, the uh, this farm life or farm animals. Okay, like fluoride, uh, the farm animals you know they are most susceptible to fluoride okay, because it is very toxic and uh, particularly cattle and sheep and uh, on even horses on and this poultry they can affected by fluoride. And the acute effects of fluoride result in lack of appetite, weight loss because they do not eat properly and then health declination, diarrhea or muscle weakness or ultimately they can die. Similarly, chronic effect means longer uh, duration of exposure that kind of uh, you know even in a small concentration, but for longer period if chronic effect is there that can result into like uh, deformity of the bones and uh, overgrowth of or overgrowth of the bones also can be there in certain animals right and malnutrition or retardation in the growth all those symptoms are there because of uh, you know these uh, fluoride. Then when we see you know the average uh, this fluoride uh, content in bones and uh, this uh, degree of fluorosis and fluoride level in animals. So, this kind of relationship occurs. So, this is based on certain study. So, you can see the fluoride ingestion level correlates with the fluoride content of bones and urine. So, it directly affects, it directly affects their uh, complete body structure. When we talk about tolerance limit of fluoride, so different animals have different tolerance limit and it is also defined as per you know their status like breeding or uh, this uh, breeding animals they are allowed only very small uh, like 30 ppm for dairy cows uh, and beef cows and the horses they can tolerate up to 60 uh, means breeding, breeding kind of. 
but you know when they are ready to be sold after certain age so their concentration may be higher like 100 ppm or so in in case of sheep for breeding it is 50 and when it is to be sold it can be 160 so that depends upon the age of the animal and the state of the animal well when we talk about arsenic you know this can cause like skin diseases skin infections okay and it is present in coal and iron ores so it can cause poisoning of livestock near industrial region because it can get exposed to uh, that pollutant. Acute effects of the arsenic may result in uh, like uh, uh, severe thirst and vomiting kind of thing, okay, irregular pulse and respiration uh, those kind of problems, abnormal temperature and uh, you know it can cause even death uh, after certain hours or days. When chronic effect is seen of the arsenic then the depressing effect is there you know central nervous system get affected and you find that animals are not uh, behaving properly they are depressed they are lazy and the thickening of skin anemia paralysis and even the mortality occurs because of chronic effect of arsenic when we see the effects of arsenic on animals the visual effects you can see like thickening of uh, this outer layer of the skin can be there similarly accumulation of pus may be there at surface of the skin and severe jaundice can also be caused because of arsenic exposure. When we talk about the lead, you know lead is uh, very important in that sense because it, it is very harmful like it can cause depression behavior right and uh, this nostril infection can also be there because of lead exposure and the sources of lead can be like smelters, coke uh, ovens and uh, you know coal combustion processes. So, in nearby areas the possibility may be the uh, lead uh, present in the uh, air. Acute effects can be there means it can be present in particulate matter coating or uh, those heavy metals may be present there. This prostration can be caused uh, because of acute uh, you know exposure then staggering or inability to rise uh, they are not uh, able to rise. Loss of appetite, diarrhea those kind of effect can be because of acute effects of the lead concentration. Chronic effects of the lead can result into paralysis of muscles of the throat area. So, you know difficulty in breathing, difficulty in eating. So, again these are life threatening kind of uh, problems arise from the lead and the effects of the lead you can see like cattle showing head pressing behavior. So, if you are finding some you know cattle uh, they are you know going towards the wall and hitting the wall those kind of things and then you can you know think that may be lead poison may be there in the body. And advanced stages you know lead poisoning can result into uh, out of control behavior and it can crashes into obstacles means they cannot focus they cannot control their movements and they can fall down or they can strike to some other things. Other pollutants and their effects on animals can be seen in this uh, particular uh, you know table like ozone nitrogen oxides they can cause direct or irreversible damage to birds and their lungs. Okay. Long term exposure can lead to lung failure or uh, poor immune system and uh, this reproductive success or uh, population decline all those negative impact can be there. Then exposure to uh, this uh, PAH polycyclic uh, aromatic hydrocarbons and the toxic chemicals. Okay they can enter uh, uh, through different pathways and they can reduce the egg production or the growth impairments you know you can see the infection also they can be there. So, different kind of effects can be there from different air pollutants. So, in conclusion we can say that the air pollution has very detrimental effects on both vegetation as well as animals and the airborne particles deposited on the plants they affect the photosynthesis process and they can affect uh, you know plant life and then in in in, in uh, you know subsequently animal life can also be get affected because they are dependent on plants for food so the food chain get affected air pollution can also disrupt you know uh, ecosystem in in larger scale they can cause the biodiversity losses etc so thank you for your attention uh, for this lecture on impact of air pollution on vegetation and uh, animals so, these are the references you can go through to get additional information. Thanks a lot. See you in next lecture. Thanks.